Today we are going to talk about five cold email tips to help you get more shippers. Now, you have to understand, first of all, what is cold emailing? Cold emailing is just an outreach strategy that is designed to help you start a sales dialogue with your prospect. Okay, so let me reiterate that. Let me say that again. Cold email is using email to do an initial outreach to your prospect that is designed to start a sales dialogue that you can then convert from email into a phone call. Because we all know that shippers are not going to buy our service without having actually met us or talked to us on the phone or really understanding a lot more about us. But email can be a great first step for starting that dialogue, right? We all know how challenging it can be to get people on the phone. But in most cases, if you have the proper email, they will read your email within a few days to maybe a week, depending upon how busy they are. So it's a great way to start a sales dialogue. And that's the way you need to use it. It's not going to be a closing tool. It's going to be a conversation starter. It's going to be a way to get a dialogue started with your prospect. So I'm going to give you five tips, okay? Five tips on how to enhance your cold emailing strategy. Now, tip number one is one of the most important by far, and that is you have to learn how to write catchy subject line. So the subject line is everything when it comes to cold email. If you don't write a catchy subject line and you don't catch their attention, right? And you don't build some curiosity in the subject line, they're never going to open your email and thus it'll just go in the garbage. It'll go in the trash. It'll go in the deleted folder or the junk folder. And from there, you never have an opportunity to start a conversation. So writing a catchy headline or a subject line is very, very important, okay? Here's free, three kind of little instructions within that headline. Number one, keep it short. Don't make it long. The most effective uh, uh, subject lines are typically under about 60 characters, okay? So keep it short. Number two, it, it can help to personalize it with their name. Use their name in the subject line. That can be extremely helpful, right? Because it's speaking directly to them. It makes it more relevant. It makes them more contextual. And then this, the third part of that is um, use curiosity. I like to ask questions. If you're on my email list, which many of you probably are, you see the subject lines that I use to describe these types of Freight Broker Bootcamp Lives, as well as other emails I send. And a lot of times I like to ask a question because I like to use curiosity as a tool to get them to actually open the email, all right? So those are a few tips on how to write a catchy email subject line, all right? Now, number two, number two tip is keep the email message short. Ideally, you wanna keep it under 100 words, all right? So if you keep it short, what's gonna happen is they are more likely to read it. If they open an email and they see this big wall of text and they see three or four or five or six paragraphs and it's really long, all of a sudden their mind says, I don't have time for this. I gotta do something else and there's a very good chance that they'll never come back and read it. So you've gotta, number one, get their attention with the subject line. Number two, you've gotta very quickly grab them and deliver your message. So you have to keep that message short. Don't get long-winded in this email. I promise you, we all have ADD. We don't want to read long emails. We want to skim them quickly and we want to see exactly what it's about as quickly as we can. Okay, so that's number two. Keep the message short. Number three tip is personalize your message. Inside the email message itself, personalize the message. Reference their name, of course. Use their first name. That's an obvious one, right? Um, another thing you can do is reference their social media uh, profiles. For example, LinkedIn. Let them know that you've looked at their LinkedIn profile. Let them know some information that you've gathered from that LinkedIn profile. Use some sort of uh, personalized data that you can pull from them, whether that be some sort of sales intelligence um, or whatever that may be, to make your message more compelling. All right. And then 
number, uh, the last one there is talk about their interests or some recent activity. Again, your job is to try to make it your message relevant and to stand out and to be contextual. So if you talk about things that are important to them or you reference things that are important to them as a hook, as a way to hook them, they are more likely to actually read your message, which is more likely to obviously start a dialogue of some sort. Okay, so that was number three, which is personalize your message. Number four is use short paragraphs and sentences. I said it a minute ago. If you open an email and there's this big wall of text with a paragraph that has six sentences and then another paragraph that has six sentences and another paragraph that has six sentences, you're going to look at that and you're going to get blinded. You're going to say, I don't have time for this. So you have to format your emails in such a way that they're easy to read. You'll notice that my emails, in many cases, each sentence is its own paragraph. So I will write a sentence and then I'll do a space and I'll have another sentence and I'll have another sentence. The reason why I do that is psychologically, you are more likely to read that email than if I were to put three sentences in one paragraph. Now, I know it may not be uh, your English teacher from sixth grade or ninth grade or 10th grade might not believe it's, it's um, uh, proper English, but I don't care because it's not about proper English. As long as I'm writing it and, uh, you know, and, and it's grammatically correct, I'm not worried about the, the, the paragraph structure. What your design, what your goal is, is to get them to read from the top to the bottom. And if you have a big wall of text as a message in, your e in the email, the likelihood of them reading that is slim to none and slims out to lunch, okay? So you short sentences and paragraphs, it will, it will be much more effective to get them to read your message. That's number four. And number five, the last tip is don't forget to follow up. Yes, you heard me say it. This is where salespeople really suck in most cases. They, follow, they fail to follow up. And if they do follow up, they don't follow up properly. Cold emailing is not a one-time event. Now, the first time you send it, it's the first cold email. But you are going to need to send subsequent follow-up emails to people that don't respond because a lot of them are not going to respond. Statistically speaking, I read a study recently that email follow-ups, four to seven email follow-ups, has a three times higher reply rate than cold emails with one to two follow-ups, okay? So statistically speaking, if you follow up between four and seven times in, in via email, you are gonna three X your chances of a reply than if you were to just send one or two cold emails, okay? So those are the five tips, but I'm gonna give you a bonus tip. I am gonna give you a bonus tip. Bonus tip is number six is write like you speak. Don't become a machine just because you're generating an email. Write as if you're having a conversation with that person on the phone or via Facebook Messenger or some Messenger platform. Write like you speak. First person, make sure that you become human to that person. They don't want some corporate style email that sounds really salesy and pitchy as you know, to, they don't want to, they don't want to read it and they definitely don't want to reply or respond to it. Okay. So bonus tip number six is write like you speak, write like a human, don't become a machine just because you're now using email. So those are six. I over delivered. I said I was going to give five, but I gave six cold email tips to help you get more shippers. Okay. So again, if you guys want to get, be a part of my freight broker sales accelerator program which is that new program about to release that takes this piece of my brain and the 25 years of, of b2b sales experience that i have and particularly all of the freight broker sales experience i have and share it with you in an online course a total you know which is that basically taking everything i know about sales and putting it into this program um make sure you sign up as, as on the wait list okay so there is a wait list right? There is a wait list. 
and you can get into that wait list by simply going to freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash FB sales. Again, this is not a free program. There will be a cost. You'll get all the details when it does release. And I'm fully expecting this program to release this week. Okay. If you're curious now, if you're curious about becoming a freight broker and you're brand new and you're just looking to get started, definitely check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. That is my online training platform that has trained over 8,000 freight brokers and agents and helped them to go from no knowledge to startup to start generating revenue and profit for themselves, okay?